Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital January 4th through 8th recap. We're kind of going to do things a little backwards today because, so as many of you know, we did not have episodes on, well, we didn't have an episode on Wednesday and then Friday was preempted, but ABC actually made the entire episode available on their website and their app immediately that evening without having to, you know how like typically you have to sign in and use your cable provider or whatever, but without having to do that. Understand why Wednesday, no new episode, but I'm glad to see that they, I mean, we've been preempted a lot in the past. Way too much. Long time. I'm glad to see that they have this workaround now that they're using, but... We're not going to do a reality check this week because we feel just collectively we have all um, had quite the reality check this week. And, I, you know, we talked about it off off air that it just feels like it, nothing we say can compare to everything else that was going on. No. So um, just, just want to be respectful. But we know that a lot of people are struggling right now. And if you are looking for some resources, a good one to reach out to is the NAMI Help Line. It's 1-800-950-6264, spells out NAMI. It's a peer-supported helpline to help you find the resources that you need to help your mental health. So if you're having trouble processing things or whatever, please reach out to them or to a healthcare professional and take care of your mind and emotions because we got to, yeah, it was a trying week for that this week. Yes. So we just want to, I guess that's our reality check. Check Help is out there. Yes. And please, please, please take the steps that you need to make sure that you're okay. So that's our little PSA. And one of the reasons why we love General Hospital, because it is our little break from reality. Yes. And that's why we jokingly do the reality check, because, you know, a lot of people think people obsessed with soap operas are just delusional. I was very happy to be in my delusional place this week. <laughs> When I was able to. So. Seeking psychiatric help from Kevin this week. That's what I was doing. Yeah. (laughs) So there was also, I had one quick correction for myself. In the 2020 recap that we just released on Thursday. Thursday, thank you. (laughs) I said that Britt could be carrying the fibromyalgia. It's rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, we kept saying it, and then for whatever reason, I just came out with fibromyalgia out of nowhere. So I don't know where that came from. Um, And also, I forgot to list Maxie's pregnancy under babies. Oh. We talked about her pregnancy so many times. (laughs) That's funny, because I totally did not. Well, and nobody pointed either (laughs) one of these things out to me, so I really, really appreciate that. (laughs) But I sure as heck am calling myself out on it. That's funny. So... Okay, with those corrections made, <laughs> let's get started on this week. All right. We have quite a few pieces of paper. Yes, because... the jar is like really full for a four day week. You must have been in detail. Well, there was here. a lot of single, I, I don't feel like there was much flow this week. I don't know about you. Like, I don't feel like anything really, everything, almost every single scene was its own little yes. thing. Like, there was no, there was no progression. How right, no about. crossover. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, I started with a good one Sunny. <laughs> that's what I picked. All right, so give us a little Am more. I just sticking to Sunny? Yeah, that's what I am because oh, all the no. other stuff is... This is too hard. Okay, do we want to save that one then? I mean, I feel like it's like one sentence at the end anyway. I'm going to draw again. We'll okay. get that over there. We'll get there because that, that really was the end. Uh, Anna and Dante. <sighs> I'm tired of Dante and I hate saying that because he is just beautiful and I enjoy seeing him. But... Pick What's a going side. On? Like, just pick a side. Figure right. out where they're putting him. Are we going to make him be crazy and awful and do horrible things? Or are we going to put him back with a straight and narrow? Because he's still back and forth. Well, and Anna was kind of calling him out on that, too, where she was just, you know, checking in on him, I guess. Yes. And asking him 
pretty much like, oh, hey, what it, what's it like to be back? Funny how you made that quick recovery. Yeah. You know, how are you feeling? But even then, I feel like she didn't know what she was asking because there's not enough signs one way or the other. He's right. just there and weird. She had a better insight into it last week. I think that she was trying to get it out of him. But I think that she's going to figure out that he's definitely not the one calling his own shots. Yes. I feel like that's it. I, yeah, I feel like... I got my favorite! Oh, no. Willow and Chase! So Willow and Chase went on a date. <laughs> I should have written a nursery room. Yeah. So Willow and Chase went on a date at the Metro Court. She and looked... Wow. She got all snazzed up for him <laughs> and was upfront and honest about it with Michael. You know, he was like, oh, you look nice. And she's like, thanks, I'm going on a date with Chase. I'm meeting Chase for dinner, is what she did say. Mm -hmm, Except for it was, I'm going on a date with Chase. Well, and then they, so they had a good time catching up. She definitely seemed so nervous. I, She's a really good actress. Yes. I really like how they're kind of, she's really good. I mean, we talked about it on the 2020 recap when she found out about her son. I mean, those were tough scenes to watch. And now her confusion and everything going on with Chase, Michael, what's going on, was really good. It was. So they were catch- catching up, and then she's like, okay, we can't keep tiptoeing around this. We need to actually talk. And he's doing a really good job. He's like, I just want us to be able to talk. You know, he's not. But then he did say that he loves her still. Mm-hmm. And then she leaned into him. She did. And they kissed. Did, did, they, did they actually kiss, or did she stop it before they kissed? Oh, they COVID kissed. No, I don't think they did. Yeah, they did, because she said, I wanted you to kiss. And he's like, I'm sorry, I thought you wanted me to. And she said, I did. I think they COVID kissed. Oh, no. See, I took it as, as they leaned in, and then she stopped and pulled away. I didn't. No, okay. I think I think that they actually kissed. Okay. Well, COVID kissed. They were so supposed to have if it was real, kissed. If it was normal soap time, they would have kissed. Right. Okay. Right. And I felt like the reaction afterwards was, oh. they did. Okay. They did actually kiss. That's where, but she said, you're a line, but I'm a married woman. But, Finally, she remembered that. But it proves the point that she's not, like, really married. No. Like, in her head and everything. That doesn't count. In her he- in her head. Doesn't count. Duh! But you know what I mean. So it was, it's going to be interesting. I think that no matter what, I think that she and Michael will get an annulment, even if she decides to pursue a relationship with him, just so that way they can have a fresh. That would be okay. Clean slate. Because that's also quite the um, commitment to start a relationship off married. Mm -hmm. So. I'm just not going to love this with you. I'm sorry. I was disappointed. Why? Is there a thing in there that says her and Michael? No, because there was no her and Michael. There was her and Michael. He was obviously. In the den. No. Yes. He was obviously upset. He just got the phone call. He was obviously upset. And she did not pick up on that at all, which is not like her. Because she's very in tune with his feelings. And then she was like, oh, I'm going, and again, didn't she say on a date, him, but I'm going on a date. But she asked him, was there an update? Mm-hmm. And he said, nothing that we can do right now. So she did ask him. I don't care. I feel like she should have known. She should have stayed there. She did ask, though. But she can read him better than that. I, if I come in here and I can tell that you've been crying and I say, are you okay? And you say, yeah, it's fine. I'm not just going to leave it at that. Because you're obviously upset. I can see I it. can't picture me. <laughs> I'd be like, no, let me tell you a story. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. I would but maybe push just... it out of you. And she, even if, like, sometimes you don't want to say what's going on, but just having someone sit there with you. She should have stayed home with her she husband. She offered, though. She did, but she should have stayed home anyway. He wasn't going to say it. You know Michael. He's much too nice. Especially knowing that she was going to go have dinner with Chase. He would have never ruined that. Maybe. So, I think she should have stayed think she home anything. with her husband. But she did ask. Mm-hmm. Should have stayed home with her husband. Ugh. Ryan. Why? Oh, that's just this piece of paper is very significant to my life. But <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. So, they announced that he is there mentally. Like, he can hear things and he can understand things. But no part of his body is working. He has what's called locked-in syndrome. And it is a rare neurological disorder characterized by complete paralysis of voluntary muscles, except for those that control the eyes. There you go. That is from rarediseases.info.nih.gov. Thank you. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Well, I wanted to know if it was a made-up 
Right. It didn't sound made up, but it I did was sound like, made up. So but... good at not doing that kind of thing. Right. But... So yes. So he is locked in. That's a good name for it. Locked in to his body and can't do anything. So Ava went in and tested it. That was good. Yes. I was waiting for him to flinch, and I don't know that I believe. I don't know that I believe the diagnosis. Neither do I, because he smirked whenever he was going to the right elevator. Elevator, yeah. Yes, but she was good. She like blew in his ear and like touched his hand, and he didn't do anything. Dog and so her then she nails. Dug. In you the could hand. see like the bleeding marks from digging her fingers into him, her nails into him, and he didn't move. Okay, she did it on his right arm. I was just thinking, I'm like, but didn't he lose a hand? So what if she was doing it into the prosthetic? It's right. like, um, Ava, come on. He would not feel that. I feel like she would have known. Yes. Yes. So, I, I'm again, I'm over him, too. Can we just kill him? Can we just be done? I don't know why he's back. I don't I mean, either. I don't, I don't see any. Except for now they've put him in a minimum security. Right. Because. He can't move, so he doesn't need all of that security. So we know that he's faking it and somehow going to come back and do what? I don't know. Why? I don't Who understand. Knows. My favorite was Ryan or Nicholas saying that he needs to be wheeled into heavily chummed waters. And the look on Laura's face. So Kevin had called Laura and she was with Nicholas and Ava. And yes. he was like, yeah, bring them too. Because obviously Ava needs to know this stuff too. So, and Nicholas. But the look on Laura's face was such a mom look. Like, it's okay to think those things, but we don't say them. (laughs) Right. You know, and then she looked at him again, like, what's wrong with you? You know, (laughs) it was, I just felt like I've given that look so many times. Oh, yeah. Like, seriously, you just said that? Yep. I liked it. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, that's it. it. We'll have to see. Again, I don't understand why, but maybe the GH writers do. (laughs) I I hope so. (laughs) So Sam had a couple things going on this week. She had, I forget where she started though. Did she start with making the phone calls to the rehab center? I don't know. Okay, so at some point Sam was making calls to a rehab center and Franco came to her door. Looking for Jason. Was looking for Jason. Shoot, I might have had this on another one, but we're just going to wrap it up into here because it's making sense now. And... She's like, oh, didn't you hear? Jason moved out. Like, didn't Liz tell you? Which is weird. Which, uh, right. And I'm just like, um, are we going to start that? Are we going to start the Jason's free, so now we need to worry about Liz thing? Like, is that what she was telling him? Or was she just basically like, I don't know what her point of saying that was. I don't know either. Nope. So then Franco went to leave, and then he passed out. And Sam was like, oh, my gosh, let me actually take care of you. It took her a while to get to the let me take care of you stage. Well, I think that she thought that he was playing her, so it makes sense-ish. And then Jason wound up coming home, and she's like, yeah, I have your stuff upstairs, and left the two of them in the living room. And Franco's like, I keep hearing Peter's voice, blah, 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 blah. Remember our deal. And I don't think anything else really came of it. Okay. And then she ran into Peter at the Metro Court and literally ran into, well, he stood up. Here's the thing. <laughs> so I have a whole issue with this, how this all played down. Because she was just like, whoa, dude. And it's like, but you were approaching, you had the visual, you saw him stand up. Yeah. You know, it's, but whatever. Right. I mean, he could have looked behind him before he stood up. Whatever. I felt like that was just a very weird scene. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, can we coordinate your bachelor party on the same night as Maxie's bachelorette party? And he's like, quit trying to pretend like you he want me to jerk. marry. You're but such a jerk. It was it was awkward though. The whole scene, we've talked about this before. I don't know when Sam and Maxie became such good friends that we're coordinating baby or bachelorette shower bachelorette showers. Bachelorette parties and whatever. It well, doesn't Maxie make any sense. Planned her and Jason's wedding. I know. But that's because that's Maxie. Right, Maxie plans everyone's wedding. That's not really a, we're best friends. She loves weddings. So I don't understand. But for Peter to call her out at that moment was just stupid. Yeah. Okay, yeah, she's giving you a chance because you're marrying Maxie. Right. As is most of poor Charles, and he just had that conversation, but that's another note, I'm sure. It is. So why are you being a jerk? Right. I don't know. And so that was just awkward. And mm-hmm. then as he was walking away, she notices Dante is glancing at yes. them. 
And she goes over and starts talking to Dante and is like, hey, so uh, I saw you paying pretty close attention there to me and Peter. Her PI skills were coming into play. <laughs> but it was still, it was really weird. And then just hearing her and Dante talking about Julian mm-hmm. and about their brother. Yes. They don't act like they have a sibling in common. Nope. No. And then I started doing the whole family tree through this whole thing. And I was like, I no. can't, I can't, I can't. So we're going to have to do that sometime, though. That's what we could be doing. I have an idea for that. But, yes, it was very weird. When they first said it, like, my brain got there before the other part of my brain got there. Because I was like, they're going to say we have to get along for our brother. But then the other part of my brain was like, brother? How do they have a brother together? So <laughs> I was all over the place. But they'd never but they'd do never anything. not gotten along. Like, no, that's the thing. Exactly. Is that they've always been nice to each other, and they've always been nice to Leo when they're around him. But it's not like they're going to start taking him out for ice cream, just the three of them. That'd be weird. Right. But isn't it weird that his mom and his dad, Sam slept with his dad, well, and his mom slept with Sam's dad? Yeah. It's a close family there. <laughs> we need some new people in Port Charles. Yeah, yes. Although I do like who we have right now. But okay, that's pretty much. Good? Yeah. I oh, just thought Sam was weird this week. She was. It was like she, it's like she was just like put in places just, yes. to, just to have a conversation. Yes. Leslie. I <laughs> yelled when she came on screen. I was like, Leslie! My husband's like, something happened. I was like, Leslie Weber's back and blah, blah. And he's like, a what? <laughs> That's funny. All of it. Just <laughs> do it all. See, I was just so happy. I was so happy to see her back. Because I like, we've said this a thousand times now, I like when the old characters are there. So she happened to come in right as Laura and Cyrus are talking. Cyrus grabs onto Laura and she's like, get your hands off of her. And then he tore into her. I was like, wow. He called her. He he said it was nice to finally meet the tramp that slept with his married father. And then she was all kind of spicy (laughs) with, can you be more specific? Because I've hooked up with many fathers over the years. And then he went on. And even she took a second whenever they said that him and Laura were related. She was like, what? Oh, crap. Yeah, you are. So, which I feel like that was weird. I feel like Laura would have already had that conversation with her, though. I don't know. I feel so like they would have. Because they just talked. It made it sound like they had just talked. True. Because she but said, Mom, you were supposed to, to meet me per- up there. But maybe she wants to say in person and not maybe. over the phone. Because that's kind of a... That's true. Hey, Mom, guess what? Right. By the way, that married guy that you slept with, his kids turned out to be crazy. And, and one of them's the reason why your granddaughter's in the hospital for yeah. long-term care. Maybe. Because well, she only just told Nicholas, too. Yes. Even though she, everyone she has told, she has told in person. That's true. So, okay, I will give her that, then. Laura um, has tact. Yes. So, then Leslie started getting all upset. Because they said that her and Florence were friends, which I want more on that story. I know. And then she went into one of the extra rooms, and Laura came in and was like, are you okay? And she was like, no, because I put this all in motion. I felt bad for her. I felt like it was a little bit over the top, because obviously you couldn't see this coming 50 years ago, 60 years ago, whatever it happened. But but it was really interesting to hear her say that. Because we don't have a lot of the people who, like when we were talking with Nathan Butler about Dr. Ewan Keenan. Right. He did a lot of stuff that we still have the effects of today. Right. You know, that we just, we don't think back to that. So it's, we know that the show has been on for 58 years, but to actually have someone from that time Mm -hmm. say, this is because of something I did in the seventies. Yeah. Right. Or whenever. Because it would have been the 60s that right. she did it. Is just... It was so good. Oh. It was so good. I loved I loved having her back. And I did love the way that she gave it right back to Cyrus. Like, even though I'm an older woman, I'm not going to sit here and take your crap. Nope. Let me just tell you what's up. That scene is why we love the show, I think. Yes. Like, it was just... And her and Laura still have their relationship. Like, it just... Right, and I like that Laura they didn't don't lose try. They don't chemistry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Laura didn't try to jump in and, like, protect Leslie. Nope. She was like, you can handle this. All I was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> you just, <laughs> you're messing you with the wrong lady. Started. Yep. So, yeah, it was good. It was very good. I hope we see her around more often. And 
I just, I know that you hate Cyrus, but I am loving, I am loving Cyrus and Laura. Yeah. I love their tension. I think that Jeff Kober is the perfect foil for Jeannie Francis. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just, it's, no, that acting is fantastic. 100% on point. It's not, like I've said it, it's not that I don't like the actor. He just plays it too well because right. every time he comes on screen, I'm like, oh, I hate you. But exactly. But it's been a yeah. really long time since. Yes. I mean, even Helena, you couldn't hate her that much. Right. Well, I couldn't. I don't know. Because I just, I. She still had little bits of good. And right. the only good you've seen with Cyrus is his mom. But at this point, you're kind of like, even she doesn't like you. So how can I like you? Right. Exactly. Man, I'm just pulling all my faves. Tucker. Mm-hmm. There's not much there. He's in jail. He and Portia talked about the fact that he's in jail and that he's going to have a lot of making up to do to Trina. Right. And she told him that Sonny's missing. And that was hard to watch it not be Real Andrews. (laughs) It's really funny that you say that because Emily doesn't watch it, but she gets it here and there. And so she came in right at that part and she was like, wait, what's going on? And then she was like, Sonny's dead? He's missing? What? And I was like, shh, I can't talk to you, like, watching this. And then they started talking, and she was like, that's not that guy you said he is. And I was like, no, they recast. It's a temporary <laughs> recast. So it messed up the whole scene for me, because she was too in it at that moment, and it was totally confusing right. to her, because that's not the right guy. But, like, these are two significant, so yes. This guy has taken the moment that he finds out about, or that Trina finds out yes. that he's alive, and now the moment that he finds about and I feel like we're missing, I'm sure that this guy is a wonderful actor. He, he is. obviously got he's, this role for a reason. He's playing he's it as well taggered. as he can, but there's but some not, things. No. It's like whoever the other guy was that replaced him, that recast him before he left the show. He wasn't bad, but he wasn't. No. There's some things you just need the original actor yes. to play through. And this, these were those scenes. But there's no emotion there because this guy has not had he just read a 20 script. years. Yes. He's reading a script and presenting it where right. Tagger knows it. The real, right. the real Tagger. Even though he went away it. for 20 years and came back, he's still been back for the past year. Yes. To reestablish this bad relationship with Sonny and make it into a good one or a tolerable right. pairing, whatever. Right. And hearing him talk about Sonny, it just wasn't the same. Effect. No, there wasn't. He's like, man, it, it felt like he was reading cue cards. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sorry. Like, that's just... But right. That was the... Because there was no emotion. Right. It was just reading the material. Yeah. Yeah. So. Rial, come back. <laughs> right. Aren't we done with whatever we're doing? Come on. We miss you. Well, according to his Instagram this week, there were some scenes. Yes. So. I hope so. He has to come back whenever Sonny comes back. Seriously. Like, he has to be part of that. So. Oh, Britt and Liesl. That was so cute. That was so cute. So... Liesl's walking away, and Britt starts talking to her. Oh, they ran into each other. I'm sorry. Yeah, they ran into each Liesl's other. And Liesl's wearing a mask. Yes. And and um, all of the papers fall. And Britt's like, you're going to help pick this up. Like, I don't need disrespect from my doctors. So they clean it all up, and then Liesl tries to hurry away. And Britt totally calls her out. And is like, that's a different perfume you have on. And Liesl's like, oh, everyone wears it. And she's like, no, no, no. Only my mom wears it. And then comes around and pulls her mask down and is like, Ha! Huh. And I was like, good for you, knowing all that. Like, you were on it. Yep. And there, I felt like their reunion was what you expected. Like, they called each other out on their crap, but at the end of it, they were still like, what'd you do to your hair? And, right. oh, Peter and Max, you're having a baby, and whatever. So, it was really cute. I thought it was so funny when they were both talking to each other about who's taking down who. And yes. She's like, Liesl said, or... Britt said Cyrus, and Lisa's like, no, Peter, who's Cyrus? <laughs> right, right. And then she's like, so she leaves saying, and where do I find this guy? <laughs> like, I need to meet this other villain. Right. I thought it was really interesting how Liesl responded to the information about Peter and Maxie having. Mm-hmm. Because I'm kind of standing by. So I re-listened to our recap and my thought about possibly Liesl being Peter's mom. Don't ask me how it's all going to happen, because... I feel like she would remember if she gave up a child. but Maybe not. Maybe she has a twin somewhere. Well, are we not sure? And blah, blah, blah. Or, but remember also, Nathan went with Madeline. Yeah. So maybe she... I don't know. I don't know. So don't judge me on that. 
but I'm kind of wondering, is it possible that she could be, because then that would tie in Brit having that gene. Right. And, like, all that stuff going on. Somebody messaged us on Instagram and said that, because remember, Faison had the gene for Huntington's. Yes. So could it be possible that Brit's going to have Huntington's disease? Right. I don't want that to happen no. because Huntington's is an absolutely horrible, horrible disease. Right. So I don't want that to happen. Yeah. You know, that's, Brit just came back. Can we not kill her? Right. Right. And there's so much potential there. I don't want her to have to deal with any type of disease. Let's find her a couple of friends and right. maybe a love interest and go fulfill her life that way. A lot of people want her with Jason. Yeah. I think that would be cool. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it would be cool, though. It would be, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. He's too guarded. After the stuff with Sam, he's not ready. Got to find him someone. That's not Liz. She's happy with Franco. (laughs) Thank you for clarifying that. We're not going to put it back. I feel like him and Liz would be boring. Like, some past loves you just can't go back to. You just can't. It's not the same. There's no way to recreate that Well, it's exactly like what they just did with Sam and Jason. Yeah. You can't keep There was a lot of potential it. there, and then it was like, ugh. Then they're done that. Let's move on. Yep. That took a turn. There you go. That's all I have. It was your card anyway. I was going to say, it's your turn. <laughs> <It's Britain Liesel. laughs> Why are you looking at me like I should be? Yes. I was the last one talking. Your turn. <gasps> Valentina Nina. So, <sighs> Valentina Nina just happened to cross paths at the Metro they Court. They just happened to run into each other at the Metro Court like every other day and then act yes. like they haven't seen each other in I don't know how long. But Go ahead. <laughs> basically, Valentine was just catching her up on everything that's going on with Charlotte and Nina was telling him what a good dad he is. And he said that Charlotte is writing in a journal to share with Lulu. Yes, that was a great idea. That's pretty much the whole reason that they even got a little post-it note was because <laughs> I just wanted to talk about Charlotte writing in a journal. I think that's a great idea. It is. He is really being a good dad during all of this. He is a good dad, except for I think that he uses Charlotte whenever it comes to Nina. Nina obviously cares about Charlotte. Yeah. I'm not saying that. But every time that he sees her, he's like, he well, let me tell you about it. Yeah. And it's like, no. I mean, in this case, the journal thing was cute. But besides that, Charlotte's not doing something every day. It's kind of like having... The other parent, whenever you're divorced, your kid does a hundred cute things a day. You don't call them after every single one. You right. just give like the major recap of, oh, by the way, this week she learned how to do a cartwheel or whatever, right. you know? So he's a little on my nerves with that. That's really all I have. But I did like that journal idea though. That mm-hmm. was cute. And they can read it together when she wakes up. Yes. Martin with Laura and Valentine. I liked him with Laura. She wanted him to be more than just an ally. She was like, hey, hook me up. Give me some information. Let's take down our brother. And he would not. He said, I'm sticking to the law. It says this. He didn't commit those crimes then or there's not enough evidence. And that's what I'm sticking with. Like, I am not for what he's doing, but I'm not going to help you take him down unless there's no other way around that. So you're on your own, sister. And was mad because of all of the um, stuff with his mom. That she helped. And he dug and was like, do you know what happened to my mom? Yeah. And she doesn't. At that time, she didn't know that Carly had taken her, right? She even said, I think, didn't she say to Martin, there is one person that could have possibly, and it might have been Carly. Right. I think she actually said that to Martin. Right. Yeah, it started with them talking, and then she went away, and then she came back and was kind of still like, yeah, I don't know. Because Jason and Carly weren't admitting anything. But I think that's really it. It was just basically her asking him to I just help like, her. He finally has a personality. Yes. Martin is finally It's getting... about time that they're using him. Right. Been saying that for since he got here. He's capable well, of so much more. Well, because I never watched all my children, so I did not understand. <sighs> He's capable of even more than What Michael this. E. Knight can do. They need to keep pushing. It's the same thing with Cynthia Watros. Yes. And I didn't watch, I forget what she was on before. Whatever she was on before. But I watched some clips of her on YouTube. And she is phenomenal. They are not using her. Right. Right. No, I agree. Totally off topic of that, but how they all work in the same circle. I turned on the TV for something this week, and I was changing it. Oh, we were going to play uh, the Switch. And so I just turned it on, and it was whatever the other soap is that's on. And it was Kim laying in bed, freaking out with Catherine 
being her doctor as far as GH terms go. And I was like, what are they doing? And then my mind again caught up. So that's Tamara like, Braun and... I know it until I go to say it. Mary... Ellen? Something? Oh my gosh! Who played Catherine Bell? We know this. I do know this. Mary Beth. Mary Beth Evans. Mary, Mary Beth again. Evans. Thanks. Thank you. See? Boom. But anyway, yeah. Another one of those. Is that funny. Days? Is that Days? I, I, I have no idea. Okay. That's how much I I'm not aware of the other soaps. But it was just on and I looked up and was like, What? And then I was like, What? And Emily's like, Is this a new episode? Is that why you're mad? And I'm like, No, this is the wrong soap. I just I don't know this. So right. it, it's funny to see them. I don't know, like but I'm like doing seen, all the Anna research and seeing the little bit that Tad did. Yeah. In that. In that. Right. You know, because they didn't have. Yep. That's a, I liked it. He's so good. He's so good. I'm glad that they're using him, but he can do so much more. So I hope they keep him around for like a really long time. And then him with Valentine. Him with Valentine. I don't know. I feel like they just keep discussing the same stuff, though. But Valentine offered his help. Yeah. I mean, that's not shocking. Valentine yeah. likes but to be in the middle of Val- everything. But he called Valentine out on his crap, which not very many people do. That's true. In a way that actually gets Valentine's attention. Because he was like, oh, shoot, you're right. This has been a one-sided <laughs> relationship. <laughs> Me being selfish? What are you talking about? Right. <laughs> I really don't think that Valentine intends to be as much as he is. I think it just, well, especially if you're paying an attorney, it true. is about right. you're not being Yes, you're not being friendly. Most people aren't friends with their attorney. Mm. you're not normal. You're friends with everyone. You know way too many people. <laughs> normal, like, I mean, obviously I use an attorney for the divorce. I don't, like, call her up and be like, so my mom's doing this today. Right, how are the kids? It's you know? just not how that works. Right. So, yes, in that relationship, he has a reason to be one-sided. But he was nice to offer his help to find her mom, his mom yep. and anything else that he could do. But there still wasn't, I felt like that clip needed five more days after it to, like, have done anything. It was very He now isolated. has a connection to the family, though, because that's technically Charlotte's. Oh, right. No. No, because no, that's not Because it's not her mom. Okay. But, but that's where a, I was but, but the But they would they be, would be. <laughs> like her grandmother's brothers. Or I don't know. So what does that mean? That? I don't know. But something. You're right. I like how we both got that at the same time. Yes, we yes, you are. are. We're talking about, but no, they're kind of not. Okay. The four-way wedding. Go ahead. You can handle all this because I'm over it. So first, the invitation does sound like the four of them are marrying each other. (laughs) Just throwing that out there. So Peter and Maxie were at the Metro Court. They're always at the Metro Metro Court Court today. They're always at the Metro Court. Everything happened at the Metro Court this week. They're just going over the menu, was it? Uh Uh-huh. And I forget who showed up first, but it was Robert. And then Maxie excused herself because... So they saw Liz and Franco sitting, because they were having a date night, mm-hmm. and Maxie says to Peter about how the one thing she wasn't thinking about with the double wedding was the double guest list as she looks at Franco and Liz, because as we remember, Maxie kind of blew up Liz's marriage to Lucky. Right. And Lucky's help. But Maxie admitted that a couple weeks ago, yes. so yay, Maxie. When Liz got up to go to the restroom... Maxie followed her, which, why didn't we get that scene? Right. Why did we not get the bathroom scene between Maxie and Liz discussing right. them coming to the wedding? Mm-hmm. So instead, we see Franco go over to Peter, and he's like, you know, I think that we're not going to come to the wedding. And Peter's like, why? Because Finn really wants you guys there. You know, Liz is Violet's aunt. You know, that's, it's fine. You know, Maxie and I know that you guys are going to be there, whatever. And then Franco starts talking about how he's hearing voices in his head that Mm -hmm. don't freak out now. It sounds like you. Right. To Peter. (laughs) And of course, Peter freaks out, but internally, just in his eyes. And then Maxie and Liz come back and Franco excuses himself to go back to Maxie. And I guess, but they worked out that they are going to go to the wedding. Yes. Sorry, this is like really confusing. And then at some point, Robert came over too that's when the he read the invitation. He's like, so I got this invitation. But I don't know who's marrying who. Right. He tells Maxie about how he loves her and how he thinks of her as a daughter. And it is just the sweet Robert that we love. And Peter's like, oh, you're doing a great job just dealing with me. Thanks. <laughs> and then Maxie left again? Yes. 
Where did Maxie go then? They were going to meet the <gasps> wedding planner. She was going to, wait, she was going to meet the wedding planner, Sarah. Sarah, yes. So, what's Liz's sister's name? I don't think so, but go ahead. No, exactly, but why does she have a name, Sarah? <laughs> and we just talked about Liz's family. I understand. But she's supposed to be a doctor, so. Right, she's not the wedding planner. You never know. She could have. She's you know not. what? She could have. She's she not. could have just been fed up with. She's not. The doctor life okay. and is now a wedding planner. Okay. Listen, she could have had. Yes, mm-hmm. it could be her side gig. Nope. But go ahead. Do you know who the wedding planner is? I do. Okay, I'm, I'm like, saying you it's not. There's no way you can have. There is more than one Shannon in our town, and there's more than one Amanda in our town. So I'm pretty sure Sarah. But, I know it's a very exotic name, but. Perhaps there's more than one. But we don't name characters that are off screen without a reason, typically. Okay. Continue so I on found with your significance in... Uh-huh. What? <laughs> it's a continue on with your foursome. <laughs> and so then... I feel like that mo- might mostly be it. Anna had no idea there was a wedding planner. Oh, that yeah. That was the significance. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Sarah. <laughs> Robert and Peter kind of had words, but nothing more than they usually do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tolerate you because Rihanna's kid and... Right, they rehash that every day. Maxie and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so was that really it? Yeah. Okay, that was... I I do. I really think the whole point of that was that Anna has no real part in planning her wedding. And even Maxie said that. She was like, Finn doesn't care and Anna's happy with whatever, so we're good. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't... Still feel like Anna doesn't want this double wedding, but okay. Exactly. But exactly. I think that, and Robert asked her that. How did you get into this? And she was like, you know, Maxie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Guess that's I thought Sarah. the whole purpose of it was to say Sarah. And to drop that name. Okay. I think you're crazy. I could be. Sasha. She was cute. She was nice this week. She went over to Carly's to say thanks. And I'm sorry for not appreciating you trying to help me whenever you found me. Hi. Whatever day that was that Carly had tried to take care of her. Mm-hmm. And... I mean, obviously, she was just placed there to take care of Michael whenever he came in to announce about Sunny, which we'll get to because we're not doing that yet. And that was pretty much it, right? Yeah. She didn't talk to anybody else, right? She was only Carl. No, but I like that she else. said was she? she's been in outpatient, so I'm assuming Narcotics Anonymous, right? Is that what she... I would assume so. And she was cute because she was like, I don't really want to be in that but I was told I have to by Maxie and Carly was like most people don't seek help unless they're given an ultimatum so you're good but they were really they were good together I like that yes it was very genuine and even her being there for Michael again she could tell he was upset so she stayed there no okay so now I kind of have a problem so Sasha was on her way out and Carly was talking to Sonny and Michael yeah (laughs) was talking to Michael about (laughs) Sonny And Sasha backed up and said, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Like, who's missing? She was, That's what she said. No, you're she, right. She was you're on right. her way out. She should have left. Heard, and she interjected into Except for their conversation. Maybe she picked up on Michael's whole, like, body. What is it? Body language. My God. I could not think there. Um, ugh, something bad's going on. And she wanted to be there for him because she cares. Unlike Willow, who walked out to go on a date. Okay, so next. <laughs> I don't know. It was just, it was weird. Because, like, when she when she turned around, she was like, I'm sorry. It was, and I think it was her body language when she did it. Because she kind of, I don't want to say snaked in. But, like, she placed her hand on the banister and was like, I'm sorry, what? Yes. Like, she was Is being nosy. Yes. Okay, I got your girl this week. Oh, there you Jordan. go. Jordan. My girl. Okay. Let's start the rant. <laughs> Portia totally calling out Jordan. Saying, you don't get to validate my feelings to assuage your guilt. Yep. Oh, I loved it. We need that printed on a t-shirt. <laughs> it was so, 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 so good. Because it's the truth. It is the truth. She's like, you don't get to just be like, oh, it's okay that you can feel that way. And mm-mm. <laughs> you don't get to agree with people's feelings or not. Feelings or feelings. Was there much more to that conversation? That was really all that I got out of it was that, oh, and. Portia was calling her out about empty promises that she right, gave, and she called her out on. I risked my career, yes. and you couldn't even tell me at that point. Right, right. Come and Jordan on. totally dismissed that. She was like, "I appreciate the sacrifices that you made, but it but, wasn't a sacrifice. You, it's not like I lent you ten dollars. I was my career. I'm a doctor. Right. Are you aware? Right. Yeah. Hippocratic oath to do no harm. Although technically, she did not do harm. True. But 
You're not allowed to falsify that. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And then Jordan and Cyrus. So Cyrus comes like busting in. That was good. I was proud of her for finally finding her backbone. And he's like, you need to find my mother. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Do I, don't I? have jurisdiction in Vermont? Yep. And, oh, what's it like to know that someone you love is missing and you don't know, or you think who has them? Oh, and then she even said that. She goes, if you think, if you're right about who you think has her, you know she's not in, like, they're not going to hurt her. Right. You know, so, oh, or did Laura say that to him? One of the I two of them said, said yeah. that because it's, you know, they're not going to. Right. She said Basically, the playing field's finally even. She's like, I told everyone all my secrets. Yeah, there's nothing left to tell. So... And she straight up told him, I'm not doing your bidding anymore. Yep. So. Finally. It was good. Finally. And that was the Jordan that we used to yes. know. She didn't take crap from anyone. So yes. I'm glad that they at least gave her a scene. One scene where she was back to normal. Maybe she's coming back. Who knows? Anything else with that one? No. Yeah, that was really it. Oh, I did like Portia saying to her. You know, I saw your husband, and he was upset, and I yes, could and I sent him on home, done whatever I wanted to do, but instead, I told him, go talk to you, yep. so you should be nicer to me. Yes. Yes. I really liked Portia in that scene. I know your card was Jordan, but... No, I had Portia on there. It was Portia and Jordan. Okay. Liesl and Dante. I was kind of distracted during that scene. Did they get any further than the doctor dude died, so I'm here? No, that was pretty much it. Dante they, thought well, he, he was going to see Kevin. Yes. He got a summons from Kevin to come. So he went to the hospital looking for Kevin, walked into the lab, and it was Liesl. He was like, what the heck are you doing here? And she said, Clicky Pen's dead. Yeah. Is there any, like, they didn't go any further, well, right? Well, he started to, I mean, he started to challenge her and everything, and then she clicked the pen. Okay. And then he switched. Okay. He became more. Under the spell. Yeah. Of the Clicky Pen. <laughs> So, but yeah, that was pretty much, I mean, I think. It was just, we saw him, we yes. saw her finally take control of him. Right. I and think the point was just to show that she was now in charge of him. Yes. And then. And that he's going to continue to, it really is the clicky pen and not the person. Right. <laughs> now I need a clicky pen to make everyone listen to me. Nina and Jax. So Jax, we see was on the phone with Jocelyn kind of mm-hmm. getting upset, which is different because typically. There's nothing that that girl can do wrong. He gets off the phone and is all upset that she won't come to Australia with him. And Nina's like, she's a grown woman. She knows what, not a grown woman. She's old enough. She's 18. She knows what Sunny does. She knows the situation that she's in. Nina said, she's 18. You cannot force her to go to Australia with you. I felt bad for him. I 100% backed Nina up. She was correct. If you would force her to go, that would totally mess up your relationship. He's always tried to respect her feelings, but we know how that feels to have someone that's 18 and you're like, yeah, but you're not really an adult, even though you're an adult. You're still in high school. We need to help you. We need to like guide you. So yes, Joss understands, but does she really understand? Right. Because she is still a child, even though she's not. Right. So no, I agree. But she said, go get, go make an agreement with Joss instead of Carly. And that was great advice. That was very good advice. what you need to go to now. But I felt for him, especially because Joss was such a daddy's girl to hear her be telling him no about something like that. Right. I'm sure it was very difficult for him. That was pretty much it. It was cute. I thought, yeah. I thought it was like a real scene. Yeah. So I agree. Like a real life scene. I guess they're all real scenes, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Franco, Jason, Sam. We, we already did that. did that. Yep. We did that. I liked how Jason was like, what is he doing here? Like, what do you think? Sam's having an affair with Franco? Give me a break. Right. He obviously just stopped by for whatever. Jason and Carly. So the beginning of the week is Carly telling Jason that she handled it. And he's like, oh, no. What does that mean? What did you do? And then she says about taking Florence. And he freaked out. He did. He yelled at her. And was like, we don't do that. And you aren't supposed to be involved in this. And now I have to clean up your mess. And what the heck? And she she did not apologize. She was like, yeah. I did what I thought. And neither I did he, to do. though, because he's like, "You crossed a line. I never would." Right. Which that's it's true. You know, it's but, totally but now true. He has had to be tight lipped all week. Yes, and that was the difficult part because Cyrus then came to the house and was like, "Jason, what the heck?" And he couldn't say, "Oh, Carly did it." Laura came to the house and was like, "Jason, what the heck?" And he couldn't say, "Oh, Carly did it." So now he has to take the fall 
he doesn't even know how to do that because it's not something he would do. Right. So, and Diane stood up for that. Yes. Yep. Yeah, everyone was like, and I was waiting for Laura to get that because they said something when she was talking to Martin. Somebody, one of them said something that was kind of like, oh, talking about being impulsive. Martin was like, Jason's not impulsive like that. And she's like, I, I know. Blah, blah, blah. And so I was waiting for her to be like, wait but a second. Harley is. And she never finished that thought. Right. So, yeah, he was mad. Carly crossed the line. Mm-hmm. So, and then Jordan called him to the police department. Oh, right. To try to get that information out of him. And that's when Diane was like, if you have questions. And she's like, I can either formally interrogate him or you can just seriously just Hook me up. Let me know what's going on. Right. And Jason was telling the truth. He's like, I don't know. I didn't do it. It was not me. Yeah. And then we went to Friday and he showed up to tell her. Well, Michael had well, told he got, her. But he got that information from Jordan. So he yes. came straight from the police department. Yes. So the stuff that we weren't talking about with Michael and Carly was that Michael was coming to say that they had informed him, which why they would call Michael before they call Carly doesn't make any sense either. But anyway. Called Michael to say it is no longer a search and rescue. It is a search and recover. So Jason went to kind of have more of that conversation and then announced that they found his St. Christopher, Sunny St. Christopher charm in the wreckage. And then she broke down all upset. I liked how she started with, I don't even know why I fell in love with him. I know. I hate him. (laughs) I hate him. I don't even know why I fell in love with him. Why did he fall in love with me? and And then she just sat there and cried and Jason's arms. And I felt like that was a good scene, too. Like, that's the way that would have played out, too. Right. So. And then she yelled at Jason, too. Because she's like, you told me as long as he didn't get pinned in the wreckage, he'd be fine. Right. And she knows. I mean, she rationally knows that Jason could not make any promises. Right. But. Exactly. But then even Jason was like, but obviously he did get pinned in the wreckage because his charm was on the wreckage. So that's that. Huh? Go to that? Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so then we, our cliffhanger for Friday was seeing Sunny laying face down on the ground with a bunch of snow on top of him. I'm assuming on the bank of the river or whatever. But how did they not find him yet, then? I don't if know he's on the bank d- and they've been searching for him. I don't know. But, I mean, where else could he have gone? He couldn't have walked that far. Well, and why aren't they using the thermal imaging? Thank you! <gasps> you take me! <laughs> We don't know if Sonny's dead or alive. They're presuming that he's dead because they found the right. medal and it's now a recover, not rescue. Right. And on Instagram, Maurice Bernard has been going, uh, he's not been coloring his hair and he's been growing out a beard. Oh, that's cool. So let's see. Oh, that would be comes great. In. I do have a plea. Okay. For them to please stop giving him Eddie Munster hair. <laughs> The man is old enough. We need some salt and pepper in yeah, there. Right. And he looks good like that. He does. And you can tell every single time they color his hair. Yes. Let's let him get a little bit more natural. Here. Right. You know, it's. Right. Even men in real world, let a little bit come through. You don't every day look that fresh and on top of it or else yeah. your wife would tell you stop doing that because it doesn't look good. You're going to have to tell my husband that because. We have had this discussion. He's like, anytime I, he's like, the first time I find a gray hair in my beard, I'm using just for men. I was like, no, you're not. Right. Because you will look ridiculous. Oh, I'll make fun of him if he looks like. Good. Sunny. He won't. Because now he has it in there. And I told him, <laughs> I was like, no. I mean, and he's, Sonny's a very handsome man. You yes. Know? But come on, we have to let him age. Right. Aging gracefully is a good thing. Right. You know, 
You're supposed to look Right, I'm not saying let him go gray, but like right. you said, a little salt and pepper. It's like in some of the plastic surgery and stuff. It's like, Ugh. no, guys, come on. Just, yeah. We all get older. Yes. That's how it is. Exactly. So the last one we have is Alexis, Ava, and Nicholas at Charlie's. Oh, well, that was a good ending. So Ava and Nicholas were there to pack up Charlie's? Why are they not giving it to anyone? Why like is Wilson? Christina not coming back and taking care of the pub? I'm pretty sure she would still serve her dad's coffee. Yes, and there's that other bartender. Yeah, the one we don't know. That guy. I don't yeah. know what his name is. But there's know. that guy. You don't think that they have jobs? He's still need... able to do it. And now we're down the floating rib. Charlie's will be popping. Yeah. You know? Right. Why are we just giving up on this business? Why can't that be something that Ava does? Or Nicholas, God forbid, is just a prince. So it's not like he's doing much of anything. He has lots of paperwork. What are you talking about? No. You're right. There's no way. It does not need to be packed up. That's insane. And then Alexis shows up, saw the light on, and so I guess she was hoping that Julian was there. She was drunk. Oh, yeah. And I think that was the first time Nicholas saw her drunk Mm -hmm. since this whole thing started. Yep. And... She starts tearing into them, saying about how they're going to, like, you're always going to be looking over your shoulder, and hold it, I wrote down, looking over the shoulders and the lying and the manipulation, and I'm like, but Nicholas and Ava have already gone through that, and now right. that's where their relationship is. They've already gone through all the lies, deceit, yes, backstabbing stuff, so, right, no, Alexis, you're so wrong, you know? She just wants everyone else to be miserable because she's miserable, and... Yeah, she kept saying, you know, you can't trust each other, and so this is a relationship just built on lust. I don't think that's true. I think that there is actual feelings there. Yeah. So, back off, Elizabeth. Or, Elizabeth. Back off, Alexis. So. But she at least did take a cab or whatever. Nicholas yes. offered to drive her home. And he held his tongue really well. I was very proud of him. He was just like, yeah, there's no reasoning with this girl right, right. now. Right. So. He, yeah, he did a good job of. Defending Ava, but not defending Ava. Like, she can handle, she can take it herself, but he wasn't going to let her be disrespectful. And Ava poured them both a drink. Yes. She's like, come on over. And, oh, and Ava let her know. She's like, oh, yeah, you're going to be all sad about my brother. Meanwhile, the whole time he was pining for you. Right. Trying to fix his life for you. You couldn't be bothered. Yep. Man, they messed up Julian. They did. That was so There was a really good article about that, too. William DeVry shared it on Twitter. So go to his Twitter and look up this article that someone basically wrote about how they destroyed the character of Julian Jerome and did not do it any service. So, And they so didn't need to. They could have just, he fell in the river and we never found his body. Oh, mean, I'm like, yeah, they did need to give it due service to his No, character. no, no, no. They so yeah. didn't need to ruin him. There was no reason to ruin him. No. We could have just left it open-ended. I mean, he could have done some shady stuff and that explained him leaving and then just let it sit there. Right. But I guess there's no... Rewinding that. So so now I guess we're losing Charlie's Pub and the Floating Rib. <laughs> yeah. That's why everyone's at the Metro Court. That's true. But the Metro Court is a totally different vibe than a little more one of those places. Oh, we forgot to talk about Chase and Dante seeing each other. That was cute. That was cute. That was cute. That was about it. Right. It was just kind of like, hey, I haven't bugged you because you just got back and you have a lot going on. But when you want to catch up, let's grab a beer. Right. Even though now we don't have a place to do and that. Da- but Dante <laughs> thanked him for... Walking, walking after, after the, the family, family and everything, so. Yeah. Oh, and that was the other thing, is that Chase told Willow that they retired Thor. Yes. His, yes, that his was dog. cute. So, that was okay. cute. Yeah, I don't have anything. Yay, I did good week on this week with the notes. Yeah, you had it all. Good job. Sweet. So, join us on Thursday as, it's the Poor Charles 411. It's either going to be an interview with a fan or something. Or something. How well organized we are for that. I think it's going to be the interview with the fans. I think so, too. So, join us on Thursday as we talk to one of you. Have a good week. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 